Hi everybody, thanks for stopping back at the Cranberry Cornstalk YouTube channel, a channel where we share our love for primitive decor, whether we make primitive decor items or we sell decor items or just share things that we like. We hit uh, local gift shops, antique marts, we've hit the one in Punxsy, in Punxsutawney, for those of you who don't live local. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we just love our primitive decor here on this channel and it's a place where we share different things that we do. If you don't know what types of things we do, it's www.thecranberrycornstock.com. You can also find us on Etsy, the Cranberry Cornstock Company, Etsy.com. We also have YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all of those social media platforms for you to check us out, to check us out and see if you'd like to be part of our primitive decor community. Last week I shared with you my most exciting news about the buildings that I bought for, um, oh, got a hair out of place. <laughs> the buildings that I bought from Penn's Colony and that's in Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, and Shaker Woods, which is in Columbiana, Ohio. Those buildings I bought to sell out of. And the progress on those is, yeah, crickets. I put some feelers out for um, some people to put a new roof on it so that we can stop the leaking. You know, you may run into this if you end up buying them yourself. I, I don't know a carpenter. Um, my husband's a good carpenter. He just doesn't have time nor does he want to work on the buildings that I have out in the field. That being said, it seems like other carpenters find it kind of annoying as well. It's not a big job, so they don't make a lot of money at it. And it's maybe out of their way. It's such a small project and I, I'm not sure what the problem is, but nobody seems to want to help me. I did have a couple of people that said they would give me a bid. So I'm just waiting on them to go out and see um, <clears throat> what they can do to help me as far as uh, just the main structure of it. I'm going to try to keep all the moss on the roof, try to keep, uh, is keep it as primitive as possible. It's it's rough when you have all these construction workers say, tear it down, build a whole new building. But I think just the, the primitive cuteness of it, if you know what I mean, it's just adorable. I love the moss on the roof. I love the rotted wood and all that stuff, but I guess that wouldn't stand. So I'm trying to go with the structural part of it just to get it fixed so that it stays up. But then I want to maintain the way it looks. And that's going to be kind of try to marry the two together. I'm thinking about getting a metal roof one. One of the people who are actually giving me a bid has some of <clears throat> that old corrugated metal, you know, the steel sheets with the rust on it. I was so excited when he told me that. I, I told him I would love to have that on my roof. So I'm trying to maintain the primitive, but yet make it stable enough so that it, it lasts for years. So that's where I'm at with those. It's, it's so fun and it's all I think about all the time. Um, this week, uh, I've got a couple of things going on. Hopefully I'll get some footage to share with you uh, for next week. But um, next Tuesday I'm doing a banquet and I'm doing my um, sketch and paint. Uh, <clears throat> the paint and paint to music is called Silhouettes to Music. I used to uh, do a lot of it. I, I backed off on it just because I'm so busy with all of my other primitive decor. But I do paint silhouettes to music. It's a ministry that I started a long time ago and I like to still dabble in it because I just love to give back to the Lord and, and just praise Him for the things that He's done for me. And when it comes time to just paint for Him and in worship, I love to do that. So next week I'm going to be doing a silhouette to music at, I think it's a mother-daughter banquet. And I'll try to get some footage of that for you. It's been a long time since I had footage of that. So <clears throat> we'll try to get a little bit of that and uh, another thing is uh, this Saturday is a local uh, craft fair, a vendor fair, whatever you want to call it. And I've shown you that before. I'm going to try to get better at my videography. And this time I'll try to get you some uh, video footage of how I set up. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me uh, what I do. I'll share with you what I do. And then you can go from there and develop your own way of doing things. But that is this Saturday. That's the first event of the year for the Cranberry Corn Stock outside of uh, local sales on you know my Etsy and my wholesale sales so that's where we're at it's been a busy week I've been making candles I got a new pear mold it makes primitive cute little cinnamon dusted pears I can't wait to show you a little bit of that 
I did make a TikTok video of that, so check that out. Um, you know, the SM, SMR, I forget what you call it, where you make the noises to take things out. I don't know why we as humans like to hear that crackly sound and the peeling sound. So I did make a ASMR video on TikTok, pulling the pears out of their mold. Those are so cute. Make sure you check them out on our Etsy page and on uh, the the regular uh, cranberry corn stock page as well. If you're a wholesale dealer, check us out on FAIR. We're out on FAIR, so check us out there. I've got some footage of that. I um, just made some candles. And um, I showed you this week, I had to make another, you know what, you guys, honest to goodness, as soon as I make these dolls, I sell out of them. I make them on YouTube for you too, because you guys like to see the dolls. As soon as I make them, I, I sell them so I'm still making dolls I can never catch up to making dolls so the last time <clears throat> I made a doll this week I decided I do sell the patterns but I've never videoed the how I make the patterns so this it dawned on me this week when I got another order I thought I'm just going to show you how if you want to try to make patterns yourself it is so easy don't be intimidated by it I always was I was always intimidated by the patterns and I had no clue how to put together I just tried to picture the doll that I want if I just flattened it out and then when you have sides you have to have a side strip to make that also and you just I mean you can figure it out uh, I don't know how to explain it to you but once you try it you'll kind of get the knack and you'll or there'll be holes there'll be you know maybe places you didn't match up I don't know it's a it's a trial and error process but if I can do it you guys can do it I, I'm going to show you how I made pattern this week for the what was it for uh, oh, the Uncle Sam doll that I had last summer. I made a whole pile of them, sold out of them, and now I'm selling patterns on Etsy. So check that out. I'm going to show you how I made the Uncle Sam doll from last year. And I think it's everything. I'm excited to share with you next week uh, results from the craft fair Saturday and also uh, the silhouettes to music painting of a lady that is praying. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, you guys, so much for stopping back at the Cranberry Corn YouTube channel, let's get started. Okay, guys, so for a pattern, uh, a heavier cardstock works best for your original pattern. Just like I said in earlier in the video, just picture the doll that you want completely flattened out, something rolled it out flat on, on you know, a hard surface. Now, once you get that down and you figure out what 
shapes that you want for a doll. Consider the legs, the arms, if you want them attached. Here you can see I have the arms attached to the body and the head is already attached because this is the doll I saw an example of and I absolutely loved how cute it was. Plus it was very simple which was nice. No extra sewing on the head or the arms, just the legs. So that's what this pattern consists of and this is the Uncle Sam doll. You can find him on the Etsy page and um, on, I'm not sure if he's on fair or not but Regardless, this is how I do it. I put the original pattern on a heavier cardstock like this. Uh, I believe this was just manila folders left over from something. And then that way, when you, once you have the pattern, you can use it over and over and over again. Now, I sell the patterns, and you can see I'm tracing it onto tissue paper, which is nice to pin through. If somebody's um, making the doll later on, you can just... Uh, trace it onto the tissue like this. I use, I like to use the primitive newsprint tissue. I use the back side of it so they can still see the pattern and but it keeps it primitive. So I just trace the pieces onto there and remember to write you know if there's a, if you need two pieces uh, write cut two. If you, if you need one cut you know cut one and then where you would actually cut the pattern I like to draw the little X with the loops which is the resemblance of a pair of scissors so that's what I do the places that you would cut and make sure when you are um, writing the instructions that you remember all the tiny little details what I do for the first time through is as I'm making the doll it takes me forever because I'm, I'm writing down every little step that I take um, in the process of the doll making and then you can put that on your instructions once you make notes type it out keep it in a place if you get orders for that pattern then you just print it out and then over and over and over again and as you go along if you find discrepancies or things you need to correct you can just correct them if you do it in something like Microsoft Word or something that you can save that way <clears throat> and um, I'm just continuing the the thing that I always forgot to put in this pattern was the pants and now the pants are very simple. It's just a square. A square you cut two of them and then you cut a slot for the legs where you put the legs. Now you got to remember to keep the top part of the pants wider than the body of the doll. So you keep it wider so that when you stitch it in together you have a little bit of gather which is what makes the pants cute. Plus you want to make sure it fits onto the doll. Another thing to remember is put um, a seam allowance so whatever shape you make add a quarter inch seam allowance around the whole thing so if it's a simple circle or a square you're going to add that other quarter inch seam allowance the whole way around it's just going to be bigger than what you picture so you can see the doll doesn't look exactly like it would if it's sewn because it's a little exaggerated it has the um, quarter inch seam allowance on the outside of the actual pattern so those are just some, some things to note <clears throat> another thing I do too is I write on each piece what they are like the because I mean you know if you're just looking at this you're gonna think what would that circle be what would that rectangle be and if you don't write on pants it's not gonna register maybe if you haven't done it before that it's a pair of pants or that the part that I'm drawing there that's the actual cone of the hat that you curl around so you need one of those so you gotta remember to mark all that on there as well this works out really good for someone who's receiving it they can pin it to their fabric and I think the instructions are pretty good but this is how I do it you can of course customize yours to something maybe a little better maybe you're better experienced than I am at it and um, that's the kind of thing you can do but you can put posties I post them up on my Etsy page and people purchase them just to make the doll and so if you're good at this type of thing it's not really hard I mean once you figure out a single doll you can make all kinds of money off of um, how to produce that doll you can do like I do and make maybe six to a dozen at a time and then just change the clothing, change the face and then you've got all kinds of different dolls for different seasons. Maybe you want to turn him into a Santa Claus and the red jacket at the top instead of being a gentleman's jacket it will turn into a Santa Claus cloak. Something like that. You know, just use your imagination. It is so much fun and a nice way to make a little bit of extra money on Etsy or on your uh, website whatever you want to do but this is how I make my patterns and feel free to comment and let us know what your thoughts are do you have a better idea do you like not like one part of it I welcome all kinds of comments and I appreciate you watching the video this far